In this video, I will show you how to use a 1602 LCD screen with an Arduino and the Liquid Crystal library. In general, these screens come in a variety of sizes. This one is called a 1602 because it has 16 columns and two rows of characters. This model uses a parallel interface that is going to take at least six pins on your Arduino to communicate with the screen. There are separate types that use something called an I squared C interface that only require two pins on the Arduino, but that's gonna be a topic for another video. If we unplug the screen to take a closer look at the hardware, you will see that it has a lot of pins. There are 16 pins here, although as you'll see in a minute, you don't actually need to use every single one in order to hook this up to your Arduino. If we flip it over, we'll see that there is a row of male header pins soldered to the board. Depending on where you buy your board, these header pins might come pre-assembled or you might need to buy them separately and do the soldering yourself. These allow you to plug the screen directly into a breadboard or you can connect to these with male female jumper wires and plug the jumper wires into the breadboard which would allow you to mount the screen somewhere else for your project. Now, since this screen has so many pins, we are going to switch over to Tinkercad, which is an online Arduino simulator because it lets me zoom in and see the connections a little better here as we go over them. People always ask in the comments what software we're using to do this. We do have a separate tutorial video about using Tinkercad that you can find in our Arduino playlist linked in the description of this video. Let's zoom in here and take a look at these pins going from left to right. First, we have a ground pin, which should be connected to a common ground with your Arduino and the rest of your circuit. Next, we have a VCC or power pin, which should be connected to 5 volts from your Arduino. After that, we have the V0 or contrast adjust pin. This pin is connected to the middle pin or wiper of a potentiometer. The outer two pins of the potentiometer are connected between 5 volts and ground. This allows you to adjust the contrast of the screen. As you can see here, if we cut back to the physical camera, we can use that potentiometer to adjust the visibility of the characters on the screen. If we go too far in one direction, the characters don't appear at all and everything just looks blue. If we go too far in the other direction, then the characters sort of blend in with a white background for each cell. So somewhere right in the middle is where you get nice clear white text on a blue background. Switching back to Tinkercad, next up we have all of the pins that are connected to the Arduino. And the nice thing about using an Arduino library is that you don't really need to worry about exactly what each one of these pins does. However, if you want to use the example code available for the Arduino and the code we're going to show you in this video, you do need to be careful to connect them to the same Arduino pins or else your pin numbers aren't going to match what's in the code and you're going to have to change them around. So. For the rest of this video, we are going to assume you have the screen wired as shown here, although you don't have to do that. Next up, we have eight data pins labeled DB0 through DB7, so it starts counting at zero, but you will notice that we are only using four of them. This allows the Arduino to use fewer pins to communicate with the screen, but roughly cuts the speed at which it can communicate in half, since it can only send half of the data at once. However, especially when using an Arduino Uno, where you have a limited number of I.O. pins, that speed difference usually isn't that critical, and you're gonna be better off saving these pins for other things in your project, like sensors and motors. So we are going to skip DB0 through DB3 and leave them unconnected. Next, we have DB4 through DB7, and this is where you need to be careful because the pin number on the screen does not match the pin number on the Arduino that it's connected to. For example, DB4 here, you can see through the green wire, is connected to Arduino pin 5, not 4. DB5, the teal wire, is connected to Arduino pin 4. DB6, the blue wire, is connected to Arduino pin 3. And DB7, the purple wire is connected to Arduino pin 2. Finally, you have the power pins for the board's LED backlight. One of those is going to need a current limiting resistor, so you do not burn the LED out. 220 ohms is a good value to start with there. So that is a 220 ohm resistor to 5 volts, and then the other pin is going to go to ground. Now we're going to take a look at the code. The nice thing about Tinkercad is it lets us look at the circuit and the code side by side in the same browser window here. This is common example code that you can find for this screen online or built into your Arduino IDE. You can find the link to it on the Arduino website in the description of this video. 
Let's run this code to see what it does before we take a look at it line by line. And we see that it is printing out hello world on the screen with a counter that is counting up once every second and printing the number of seconds on the screen. Looking at the code to do this, first we import the liquid crystal library, then we create a variable for the number of seconds, and then we give a name to the screen and tell it which pins we are using. So this is where it's very important if you want to use this exact code that you connect the pins to the Arduino in the same order shown here, and then enter these pin numbers in the same order that they're shown in the code. If you get these scrambled, it's not going to work properly. And I guess in theory, you could use multiple screens and give them different names if you have enough pins. But here, we're just going to call it LCD1. So this is what we will refer to the screen as later in the program when we're sending commands to it. In the setup function, we then need to use the begin command to initialize the screen, telling it how many columns and rows it has. Again, remember that these screens do come in different sizes. And then if you just want to print something once and have it stay there, you can put a print command inside the setup function. So that's what prints hello world. In the loop function, we then move the cursor to the second row. However, note that we start counting at zero. So this actually shows up as column zero instead of column one and row one instead of row two. So you have to remember that you start counting at zero or that could be confusing. We then print out the number of seconds, wait for 1000 milliseconds, increment the seconds counter and loop again. And if you're nitpicky about keeping time with an Arduino, you might note that there are better ways to do this because technically the rest of this code takes a little bit of time to run. So this will take slightly more than a second before it prints the next one. So over longer periods of time, this is going to drift and not be that accurate. But for demonstration purposes, it's not that big of a deal. Next, let's see what happens if, for example, we add a button and we want the screen to print a different message depending on whether the button is pressed or not pressed. If you have checked out our other Arduino tutorials, which again, you can find linked in the description of this video, we do cover using buttons in one of those videos and something like turning an LED on or off, depending on whether a button is pressed. So a lot of this code is very similar. We declare some additional variables, one for the pin we have the button connected to and one for the button state. In the setup function, we then set that button pin as an input with the pull up resistor enabled, that means we do not need an external resistor connected to the button. We just have the button connected directly between ground and the Arduino input pin. So since the internal pull up resistor is enabled, the voltage on this pin will be high by default when the button is not pressed and it will be low when we press the button and connect that pin to ground. Inside the loop function, we use the digital read command to read the state of the button pin. And then we have an if else statement to print either pushed or not pushed on the screen, depending on whether or not the button is pressed. However, if I run this code, you'll see that it doesn't do exactly what you might think it would do. You see that it keeps printing not pushed and it doesn't really intelligently wrap around. It just goes off the edge of the screen here and keeps going. And it's actually not responsive if I hold the button down. So we need to reset the screen and just have it print one thing at a time without wrapping around like this. We can do that by using the clear command, which clears the screen and moves the cursor back to the upper left corner. So now if I run this, it behaves like we would expect. It's flickering a little bit because it's clearing the screen and I have a delay here in Tinkercad. But if I am not pushing the button, the screen displays not pushed. And if I hold the button down, it switches over to push. So this is pretty much the same thing you would do if you were controlling an LED with a button, except instead we are writing to an LCD screen. And again, depending on how nitpicky you are, you might think, well, that isn't really the most efficient way to do that. There's no reason to rewrite to the screen and clear it with every loop. You could have code to detect whether the button has changed state and then only write to the screen once each time the button changes state instead of writing to it every loop like this. And again, that is true, but for demonstration purposes in this video, even this code, even though this code is not the most efficient, it does work. There are a bunch more things you can do with these screens and the Arduino Liquid Crystal Library, for example, deciding whether or not to display the cursor or scrolling the characters on the screen. We are not going to cover using all of these functions in this video, but you can find them and their documentation on the official Arduino website linked in the description of this video. So we hope you found this video helpful. For more Arduino tutorials, check out our YouTube channel. 
And for tons of cool science projects you can do with an Arduino, check out our website, www.sciencebuddies.org.